Hi guys and welcome. Today we're making some mini envelope clusters. So I'm going to show you how to make any size envelope really just out of a square piece of scrap and then we're going to embellish them just to make them into some little clusters. So just to give you an idea this one's made out of coffee paper and I've done a bit of stamping on it, added a mushroom a number and some lace but they also double up as a pocket so great way to throw in your junk journal you could even put the little envelope on a pocket or a tuck or um, just simply paper clip it uh, inside your journal but really great little project they're really fun you can pull out your scraps um, just the only thing you have to do it doesn't matter about the size so i've got all different sizes here uh, as long as they're a square for this project you can use scrap card which i'll make some out of that one as well so grab your scraps out book page is great um, just some music paper even grid paper as long as it's a square then we can um, make these little envelopes so i'll just um i'll just to show you too you know you can just throw all your ephemera in these little pockets great also double up as little journaling journaling spots as well all right so just to show you a few other ones that i've done so i've done some script stamping on the back of that use the paper doll we've got birds we've got labels and mushrooms on book page just really really cute just a butterfly on that one it's actually on some music paper which was a digital download so that's just um, simply paper not cardstock let's put these off to the side and we'll make a couple of the envelopes and then we'll decorate them just to show you how easy it is I'll grab a bit of coffee dyed paper so this one is I think this one's three and a half by three and a half or four by four as long as it's an exact square now I just go um, corner to corner like that but I don't crease it and then I just fold it over just so I bring that corner together and then I just pinch in the middle and it'll just give you basically roughly where the center is now you can get a ruler and you can mark it with a pencil but there's simply there's no need uh, work out which one you want as your exposed um, flap which is that top one and just make it you know if you want some coffee dye on it you can go that way I'm just going to simply have this one plain we do our two side pieces first so just the point of that page to the center and then we crease it and then again the point in to meet meet that one and we crease it and then we fold the bottom one up now we fold it a little bit over where that is so we go up and over a little bit like that so you'll see that there's a little bit of a, a lip there and then what I like to do, and you don't have to, you could leave that like that or you could tuck it in. I simply like to just snip it across. It just neatens it up as you can see. Also with the top flap or, or the, the cover, if you're going to fold it over, you can either leave it in a point like that or you can round the edge. I actually like the edge rounded, but it's entirely up to you. My um, corner round is a bit blunt. I'm going to have to run some foil through it. And then we just glue these two sides down. So you could use this um, on bigger pieces of paper if you wanted to do some bigger envelopes for your journals. I actually like the idea of the mini. And there we go so that's your envelope done i'll then get a and you can ink it before um, I've, i like doing it after one you're only inking where you need to ink so i'll just do the edges on this one and you'd have to do that edge if you cut it off anyway so it's easier to do it this way So that's a little coffee dyed 
envelope now you can put some stamping on that if you want to I might put some script on there so just using just tucking that piece back in there and I just want some faint faint script so I've done it with the distress ink so just to add just a little bit of texture there I then want to just add a little bit of netting now this one I have dyed a little bit I think it was with the speckled egg oxide it just gives you a really muted bluey greeny color I'm just gonna just put some beads of glue to, to just to catch it and I'm using art glitter glue because I'm going to put something else over the top and then we can have a look at uh, what we want to put over the top of that it can be a mushroom a bird a butterfly a label I'm actually liking the mushrooms at the moment so now I do like the size of that one even though it goes over that lip I've actually printed these are a digital download and I've printed them on cardstock so they won't get damaged if you're putting things in and out and using this as a little pocket otherwise you know you could either clip it into your journal like that you could fold that over entirely up to you I've already inked this one so let's work out where we want to ink and where we don't want to ink so the piece I don't want to ink I'm going to put my finger on because otherwise you're going to end up gluing gluing it shut I also want to put a label of some sort out the side here or a word even this is a piece cut off from another a bigger piece so I'll just trim it up a little bit that's why don't ever throw your off cuts away because you just never know when you're going to use them especially if they've got words or numbers on them just give it an ink yeah. it's not quite straight and even though we don't always like straight it was sticking out to me yeah I'm going to tuck him under the mushroom a little bit having that bit of netting on there actually allows me some wiggle room another bit of beta glue under there it wasn't quite adhering and that's your first one done simple you can basically throw anything on them let's go with a smaller piece of paper I've got this music so I think it's it could be two inches by two and a half sorry two inches by two inches just trying to see if I've got my ruler let's just use this one yeah two and a half inches this one is <coughs> so same principle corner to corner without squashing that and then folding over so we're pinching that there and we're pinching the center so we're just pinching the center to get get the middle there and once again work out which um, one you want to have as your, your lip up and then fold it corner into the middle point corner into the middle point bottom flap up and then we're going to cut just the point off 
And then we're going to glue it down. And then we've got our little envelope. So you can see it doesn't matter what size paper you've got because it'll if it's as long as it's square it will make an envelope for you now let me just let's have a look at um, what we want to put on this one that and we might this one I've put mod podge over the top so it's stiffened it up quite a bit but I want a little bit of lace or something under that so it just has to be a scrap we're not really featuring the lace but it's just to give it a little bit of texture Uh, our focal point now once again part of that will not be on the surface so put your finger where you don't want to glue now I might just ink ink the edges a bit darker Now that can be a mini pocket or it can be just um, think of it as a cluster that can go on something else so you know if you've got a tag you want to put it on put it on your tag it doesn't have to be centered down like that it can be on an angle you know with a word across the bottom just simple great to have all different types of clusters in your stash let's make another one so let's go with a four by four. Now this is pattern card stock. Or thick patterned paper. <coughs> Excuse me. Same principles apply. It's four by four. Just making sure I'm putting the pin in my glue because it will dry up. So corner to corner. And it's really that part we're pinching together to get our, our middle or to get our center pinch. But like I said before, if you need to measure it, you can measure it. You just me measure across there and go half, which is in the middle. And then fold in our two corners. And then fold our bottom one up a bit just so you've got that bit of an edge like I say that fold edge because it brings it up to make sure you know you've got enough over flap to be able to glue it and then snip it across just it just tidies it up but once again you don't have to do that now with this because it is not double-sided paper and we've got you know quite a white stark um, edge in there we can ink it so if we have a look at this one I've inked it with a stencil I actually did this one after I had it together but if you're thinking that you're going to ink with a stencil it might be easier for you to do it before you put it together so let's just go with this uh, and you don't have to do the whole lot just just the top and just down a little bit so it'll be just up the top here so using um, once again this stencil brush or makeup brush 
and it doesn't have to be heavy inking. You've got a bit of a contrast, so if you wanted to check it, see how it fades down in there, you might want to actually, I like the fade, but just to show you, line your stencil back up as best you can. This one's not really that consistent of a pattern. And just take it down a little bit. And then I'll quickly... This one doesn't really need inking, I'm just doing the white edges. Okay, so fold and fold fold up and we'll glue that one and when you're working with um, patterned paper like this or patterned cardstock whichever that you're using it's great because half of your work's already done you don't have to do any stamping on this it's got a little bit of contrast on it anyway so you know theoretically we could throw a mushroom on there, maybe a bit of lace or something, and that would be done. I, I don't mind that, actually. Um, let's have a look what else we've got. A big butterfly. A bird. Bird goes really well with the timber. Let's see if we've got a different, different type of bird. Yep, I actually like that. And I might go a label label under it. Let's have a look at our labels. Um, I did a video on making one of these guys, so I'll put that link of that below as well. It's just so much easier having everything all out. rather than, um, you know, in a box like this where you've got to rummage through it. I want something fairly, I think, dark because we're featuring the bird. I like that, actually. It just needs something else, I feel. So let me have a look. I did pull a few things out that I thought I would use. About yeah, I think I like that. And then just glue it on there. Oops. Just going to center that one. Actually, we're going to tuck this one under it. ink our bird up a bit just to take that white edge off now with my um, digitals this is not my digital but the I purchased this one and um, I always print it on a white cardstock which is 210 GSM and it gives you a good enough thickness rather than paper i'm um, totally up to you but i found that's about the heaviest that my printer will handle and um yeah and then because we've got that white edge i always go around and you can see by distressing it that the white edge practically disappears and it and it just molds into the actual image all right so once again i put my finger where i don't want to ink on the bird you don't have to do that but I found that it really helps because 
otherwise if I inked all the bird I'd be sticking it up here and it defeats the purpose by having it printed on cardstock too if we're putting things in and out of there it's not going to bend your focal point point. and then if you need a little bit extra glue better to add it later like that then have it hanging over the edge and that's another one done isn't that awesome and then you could if you're having it in your journal you could have you know put some ephemera in there as a little pocket pop him off to the side right let's do another one let's go with a um, Whatever the bit of book page. Make sure he's not quite square, this one. I'm just going to trim him square. Because it does matter, it does, that does need to be square. And pinch the center like we've been doing and then side and side over to the middle and then point up I'm going to tidy it off this one I might ink before I glue so it'll be the whole top side. If you're unsure what the top side is, do the whole lot. It's not much to ink. And then let's glue it down. dressing in a little bit further and there we've got a little book page envelope let's have a look at um, what we're going to put on there if you don't have any ephemera you can use stickers I'm going to see if we've got any little clusters in my little cluster might all be a little bit big yep I'll have to go I have to go mini on this mini mini one uh, let's have a look at the butterfly Ooh, this is pretty let's get a label under that that's really pretty Now the butterfly's got just a touch of blue in it, so I might go a blue label, maybe. But I don't want one that's too busy to take it away from the actual butterfly. So I don't want it busy and I don't want it dark. try one more before we decide because I do like that let's go a shorter one Let's have a look at a more bolder border there, just to be sure. Mm, I don't mind that either. Actually, we'll go with that because it does highlight the butterfly. But you can see, guys, by having them in one of these ephemera holders, if I show you, 
everything's laid out there it actually helps your creativity because you're not rummaging through um, containers full I'll just quickly ink it's got a few little white edges now this is a um, Tracy Fox label her uh, Etsy shop is love junk journals and the beauty about purchasing digital downloads guys is once you've purchased it it's yours so you can print it 20 times if you want so if you um, and it's good too because when you're using your labels you find that you have your favorites and you just use them and use them and once you've used your favorite in a bought pack you've got to then use up the ones you don't like whereas with a digital download you can just reprint that page that your favorites are on and you can print it as many times as you like so that's another another little uh, one out of book page I'll just do another coffee dyed one once you've got the formula down like I said the formula is just having a, a, a square piece of paper then everything else is endless of what you can do you, you might want to just make mini envelopes and have in your stash just make a heap heap up which is really quick because that's it done just snip it off and glue it and your envelope's done so you can see how quickly you could build up a little stash of envelopes and you can make these out of vellum too I didn't have any vellum um, to do on today because I've just recently finished um, one of those ephemera holders I put in my Etsy shop so it's used up all my vellum I'll have to get some more And then we'll just give that one a quick ink. Now this one I am going to grab one of my clusters from my stash. It shows you the beauty of having things uh, pre-done on hand. Or these types of um, projects or even if you're working through your journal just to have something on hand and this is some of the ones that I have um, you would have seen a video on some of these ones oh, I love that let's, let's have a look at others yep I love that too I think I'll go with that one and this is a recent video I did on using your strips to make clusters um, it's and border punches just really really quick and easy and as you can see by having things like that in your stash so I'm putting my thumb where I do not want to glue And it's just instant instant cluster instant little mini envelope you can throw your ephemera in there have it a pocket full of really you know cute little things just to add interest and add extra things into your journal like that but absolutely fun guys um i encourage you to give it a go i hope it's inspired you you may already make mini envelopes but you may not have made clusters out of them before but use your stickers you know your cut out your fussy cuts your embellishments um, i'll just quickly go through what we've made today so this one was just using an existing um strip scrap cluster 
I'll link the video for that below. This one's or we use pattern cardstock or pattern um, scrapbook paper. And we've put a label, a bird, a couple of labels on there. This one's a book page. And as you can see, it doesn't matter what size, as long as your pages are square. So, you know, whatever you get, as long as they're square, as long as they're square. And you'll get the envelope every single time. Just a simple butterfly on there with nothing else. We've got a little bit of lace and a butterfly disc on there. That's a mini, mini one. This one here, we've done some stenciling because we want to get rid of that, um, the stark white. You could even go one step further with your brush and then just give it a light dusting over with that and it'll it'll mute the white even more then we've got our paper dolls you know a little bit of lace and a label mushroom and a label bird and some music paper on the back a book page one with um, a label and a mushroom and this one with some lace a number and a mushroom so it's really endless what you can do with these but these will go into my cluster bin and um, they're ready for when I'm working through my journal just to add that little bit little bit of extra um, you could you could use it as a flip as well and decorate both sides have it as a, a pocket and a flip in your journal there's so much you can do with it if you think envelopes um, you know that's what you can do with the envelopes you could paper clip these in but i hope this has inspired you today guys it's a great way also to use up your scrap bits of paper you've just got to make sure you cut them into a square to be able to get your um little envelopes out of them but whatever size you use as you can see you'll get an envelope out of it as long as it's it is square but thanks guys um i hope you've enjoyed today and i look forward to seeing you on the next video bye